ceremony challenge made a strong impression on all of us. And what a night it was. The Jamboree really got off to a terrific start. During the three days preceding the Jamboree, over 10,000 boys from all over the world poured into Athens. Contingents representing 9 million scouts in 89 countries. At times it looked like all 9 million came. Wherever they came in, you could just feel the excitement in the air. I can tell you, I really looked forward to making new friends and learning about their countries. And to help them feel at home in my country. At the Jamboree camp, about 24 miles northeast of Athens, scout contingents rolled in every few minutes. It looked like a regular invasion. The Boy Scouts of Greece, with the cooperation of the Greek government, acted as hosts and organizers for the Jamboree. Contingents brought their own tents, every size, shape and color. In many cases, they reflected the history and climate of the country. When the last group of tents were up, Dr. Constantoulis, the organizing commissioner, and General Spry, director of the Boy Scouts World Bureau, made an aerial inspection of the camp. What a sight it must have been. The most stirring sight was the raising of the flags. Somehow it seemed to symbolize the whole spirit of the Jamboree. International friendship. The second day of the Jamboree, we played a, a wide game at get acquainted activity. It was some time. That's where I met Max, a French boy. Not exactly formally, though. You might say we just bumped into each other. You see, each boy was given a, a card and, and required to obtain signatures from 11 different nationalities other than his own. Well, with 10,000 boys out running around, it was a mad scramble. <laughs> We were one of the first groups through, so Max and I sat down to chat and, and get to know each other better. I could speak a little French, and, and he knew some English, so we got along okay. The camp was located right on the Gulf of Marathon, and it was beautiful. That water was one of the greatest things at the Jamboree. Max and I went for a swim after the wide game. And that's when we met Dean, an American scout. It seemed like I was always bumping into somebody. Anyway, we became good friends that afternoon. And we went swimming together many times during the two-week jamboree. <laughs> They say an army travels on its stomach. Well, let me tell you, 13,000 Boy Scouts are no different. 
Each patrol of nine boys obtained its food before each meal from one of several distribution tents spaced throughout the camp. And I promise you, nothing at the Jamboree was any more exciting than those delicious aromas rising from a thousand campfires. Mm. Mm. I had dinner with Dean and his patrol one evening. This was certainly a high spot for me. I thought that I, I really got to know those boys from the United States. There was a, a lot of visiting between patrols at mealtimes. I think it was one of the most stimulating customs at the Jamboree. We got to talking about the tremendous quantities of food and supplies needed for 13,000 hungry scouts. And I told them what I knew of the situation. Vegetables, melons, and fruits were trucked in every day from Athens and packaged in nine-man portions. Refrigerated meats came in twice a day. And then I told them about the milk. At a plant in Athens, dried milk was reconstituted, butterfats added, and the milk packaged for delivery to Marathon. I had been through the plant on a tour prior to the Jamboree, so I must admit I tried to impress them a bit with my knowledge. Anyway, the milk was one of the best-like foods at the Jamboree. One of the big camp-wide competitions was the triathlon. I had a good score after the broad jump and the staff throw, and how do you say it? I was, I was feeling rather overconfident, you know. Well, that's where I met Hari, a scout from the Malagosi Republic. He wasn't very big, and I thought, well, well, to put it bluntly, I, I didn't give him much chance to win. <laughs> Wow, he ran like the wind. I've never seen anything like it. We saw a lot of each other during the rest of the jamboree. Most of us went by the Talent Orama central display area at least once a day to see what was happening. Each contingent was allotted the time to display either national or scouting crafts and projects. The place was always jammed with people and always a real thrill. It was amazing what those scouts could do with their hands. Anything from, from mosaics to delicious baking. Church services are very close to scouts. And the little individual chapels set up in the pine woods along the beach were, were just perfect for the Jamboree. I thought it was particularly generous of my friend Dean to attend a Greek service with me. That night at the arena, a famous dance group presented a program of traditional Greek dances made me feel very proud for my fellow scouts from countries all over the globe to see firsthand some of the rich traditions and customs of my country. Of course, athletics and sports took up a lot of our time. It was something we all enjoyed, and there's really nothing that will make friends so quickly. went through the labors of Hercules at one time or another. Some even went through it several times. I met a Japanese boy the morning I ran the obstacles. Kat, uh, Ka Katsuhiro, Katsuhiro. We sat around watching the other boys run the course for a while. Believe me, there were a lot of laughs. Later, I went over to the Japanese camp to visit. Katz, that's what I called him, really asked me a lot of well-conceived questions about Greece and its people. But I was used to this. I bet we learned more in two weeks than we could have learned by reading 10 volumes of history books. And then there
there was the swapping, the exchange of possessions by individual scouts. Horse trading, I believe Dean called it. Well, it went on day in, day out, in the shower, on the beach, at the campfires, everywhere. I remember one day, I ran across a session where my friend Dean was swapping with a Lebanese troop. As usual, I stuck my nose in. And as usual, I got caught. But this time, I did all right. That same day was the day of the Grand Parade. The King and Queen, as well as the Crown Prince, were scheduled to review the parade. And we were all pretty excited. This was the only time in the Jamboree that all 13,000 of us marched together. It was a memorable experience. King Paul and the Crown Prince received a tremendous hand from the visiting spectators. The parade was on. I must say I had a deep feeling of pride that day. But the royal family clearly demonstrated their strong interest in the scouting movement. Probably the biggest single event of the Jamboree took place in Athens. Eight boys from each country, plus the best national pageants, were scheduled for a big nighttime program in the Olympic Stadium. It was open to the public, with the proceeds to be used to send worthy Greek students to colleges in other countries. It was a real treat for the 2,000 scouts selected, because after the rehearsals, the boys were allowed to go sightseeing. Naturally, the Acropolis was the one thing everybody wanted to see. I live in Athens, and I, I, I see it every day. But I think I know the feeling those scouts must have had when they walked around in the Parthenon. went off like clockwork. It was magnificent. The 70,000 people of Athens who saw it are still talking. <laughs> On the evening of the last day, just before the closing ceremonies, I got together with my friends for a final chat. 
I had met many more scouts, but I had gotten to really know these boys. From the top of the mountain, we watched the thousands of scouts moving into the arena. You know, one of the things they told us at the Jamboree was that if boys can work and play together, perhaps they can continue to do so when they become men. And I, I want to be what... I believe Dean used the word corny. I don't want to be corny. But a lot of these boys would be their country's leaders in the future. And we came to know and understand one another on a personal level. It, it should help countries understand each other better in the years to come. ceremony was unforgettable, as were the close friends made by each of us. I saw Dean for the last time that night as he accepted the Jamboree torch on behalf of the United States, the site of the next Jamboree. Higher ideals and wider horizons. They are not empty words to us. All over the world, scouts have the same motto. The same salute and the same oath. Je promets sur mon honneur de faire tout mon possible. Ne que l'autre café comme nous, l'autre zéro qui va se rider et qui est en basilea. Il se met à un stade de danse comme ça. Hanoun la la nitia. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight.